Hey everybody, Phil from Two Forks Woodworks. Taking a little time out from making cabinets and things to uh, tell you a little bit about the nail guns that I use when I do interior trim. I don't do as much as I used to, but still do quite a bit. And uh, I wanted to show you the three guns that I use primarily. Um, I think a lot of people out there now are, you know, getting into the DIY thing and uh, might want to get nail guns to do their own interior trim. And I think it's a great idea. It's not real hard to do. Um, so I'll show you the ones that I use and maybe it'll help you make a decision about, about getting a gun for yourself. So all the guns that I use are, uh, require air. So you need an air compressor in order to run these. They do make guns these days that don't, um, they run off batteries. Um, I've used one, but I really don't know much about them. I don't know how long the, the batteries last and all that. Uh, so I, I can't make any recommendations on those guns. I, I, like I said, I've used one. It was nice to have when you just need to hit a couple of nails here and there, but I don't know if they'll last, you know, how long they last or, or how long they last on a job. I don't know anything about them, but I know a lot about these. And the good thing about these is you do use an air compressor with them. And, uh, these days I probably use my air compressor more for other things than I do for, uh, nail guns. They're handy to have if you got a flat tire or you need to blow up some, you know, pool toy or something like that. You'd be surprised how often you use one. They're not expensive. They're not big. Um, they're easy to put away. So, um, I recommend it. I think it's a, I think it's a good investment. So these guns are all basically divided up into gauges. This is a 16 gauge. It goes to an 18 gauge and then it goes to a 22 gauge. And all that means is the, the nail thickness basically. And, uh, for some old archaic reason, they, as the numbers go up, the size of the nail goes down. So, and you can hardly call these nails. So this is the 16 gauge nail. It's a two and a half inch nail, but you can see they're more like wires really than nails, but we call them nails. So this is my 16 gauge nailer. Um, it'll shoot a two and a half inch nail down to, I think about an inch and a half nail. And this is something that you would use if you were putting up, uh, hanging doors maybe, or doing base molding and, or some frame panel or something like that. Something where you don't have to be super, super accurate because the, the safety on this gun is this. And they call it the safety because this gun will not shoot if that's not pressed down. So in order to shoot the gun, you press that against the material, pull the trigger and that keeps it from firing over and over again, or it keeps you from firing the gun when, when the safety's not depressed. And this gun has a nice feature that prevents it from bump firing. And what bump firing is, is when you, you go and you go to shoot your material and you pull your trigger, you shoot the gun, it goes back and hits something and goes back and touches the material again. And you haven't even taken your finger off the trigger and it shoots again. This gun won't do that. You have to let that off. You have to take your finger off the trigger. Then you have to depress it again and blah, blah, blah. But it's a good thing because the bump fire thing happens more often than you think. And you can take this off so that it will fire repeatedly without taking the finger off the trigger. I don't know why you would. I would keep whatever safety they have on these guns to prevent them from bump firing. Keep them on. Don't take those off, even if you think, oh, this is kind of being a pain. Because they, they will bump fire, and it can get scary. The other thing that happens with these guns that you want to be careful of is when you're nailing something on the wall, there, there might be a screw or a nail or something behind it, and you go to shoot into that, and the, the nail will actually U-turn and come back at you. It won't come all the way back out. But if you have your hand near there and you shoot it and it hits one of those, it can come back and hit your hand. So always be careful. Try and keep your hand away from whatever you're nailing on as much as possible. I know sometimes you have to hold the piece on, but be sort of conscious of the fact that, you know, this, this, if this does hit something, is it going to be able to come back and get me? If you're careful about that, you should be in pretty good shape. Again, two and a half to an inch and a half nail, and this is the thicker of them. This is for sort of the heavier duty stuff, the doors and so forth, but super handy. It's just not quite as accurate as the smaller gun because of this big safety on the front. It makes it a little bit hard to see exactly where the tip is, exactly where the nail's coming out. So that's where the other smaller guns come in handy. This is the 18 gauge. This is a clip of the 18 gauge nails. As you can see, it's they're just maybe you can see a little bit smaller than than the other nails. 
on this gun, will, these guns will shoot probably about an inch and a quarter nail down to about a half inch nail. So obviously it's not capable of shooting the big two and a half inch nails, but that's okay for what you use these for. And it's because of this tip. When this is the safety part on it here, and it doesn't encompass the whole tip of it. So you can see it a lot better. So when you're going, say you need to nail this piece of casing and you need to hit the, the jam and you only have three quarters of an inch or whatever you need to hit, you need to know exactly where that tip is. And that's what makes this gun a little bit easier and a little bit more accurate to, to shoot. So, and even though those nails are a lot smaller, they, they, they hold tight. And these guns are real no frills. It will bump fire, but it, it's not, you're not really ever gonna do that because it's so small and it, it doesn't kick at all or anything like that. And all of these guns come with this port on the top. The bigger nailer does and this gun does. And this thing is where the air discharges out. Now these guns all take oil. You have to put two, three, four drops of oil into these every day. That's how they lubricate. But as a result, they do shoot sort of a little mist out. It's, you wouldn't notice it, but if you're shooting up near the ceiling because you're shooting crown molding up or something like that, I have seen little stains on the ceiling, on freshly painted ceilings from these guns. So keep that in mind when you're shooting it. Just turn that so that it's not, obviously don't turn it to point it towards your face, but turn it so it's not gonna shoot straight up towards the ceiling or you know under a, under a new cabinet or something like that. Be a little bit mindful of, of that. Most of the time it doesn't matter because you're not near the ceiling, but if you're nailing off crown molding or something, make sure that port's that port pointed right towards your ceiling or you're gonna make a big stain and get the painter mad. This is the last one, it's a 22 gauge nailer and th these are ridiculously small nails. In fact, they have to put that arrow on there because you won't know what the top or the bottom of the thing is. And they're, you know, these, I, again, I feel silly calling these nails, but they are, and they actually hold remarkably well. The good thing about this, not only is the, the fact that the nails are super small, but you can be really, really accurate because of the tip, but also because there's no safety. It has these two triggers on here. And this bottom trigger is, is actually the safety. And once that's depressed, then when you pull the other trigger, the gun will shoot. But it also means it doesn't have to be depressed against anything in order to shoot. So if you pull that in and pull the trigger, it's gonna shoot a nail. It's unlike any other, any other gun. The pin nailers are the only ones that'll do that. But uh, so be, be super careful. Don't walk around with your, your safety off like this all the time. And, and then just sort of not thinking, just pull the trigger randomly and shoot nails into the walls or into your dog or whatever you happen to do. So be careful with this. Really, really handy gun. Um, it doesn't even really, when you shoot a nail in, you can practically just rub the little spot and it'll go away. They're so, so tiny and they hold really well. Great for pinning together joints that you just glued or something like that. But I don't know if this is an essential gun. The other two definitely for doing interior trim. They're essential. You could probably get away with not having one of these, but if you can get one, get one, because these things are awesome. So those are the guns that I use for interior trim. This is the gun that I use for framing. Obviously not used for interior trim. It's huge. It shoots really big nails. It's incredibly powerful. It actually does kick pretty hard when, when you shoot. So if you're thinking, hey, I've got these three interior trim guns pretty much mastered and you want to build a shed or something like that and you think i'm going to get one of these these aren't even in the same realm as those guns they, it, these guns are violent uh they like i said they they kick and they're pretty hard to control so if you're thinking i'm gonna i'm gonna knock out the framing on the shed i don't think i would uh, i'd unless you have a lot of experience with one of these and you feel comfortable with those guns, you get one of these, practice, practice, practice a lot with these before you go and shoot it. But I would hire somebody, because like I said, these are scary. I've shot myself in the palm. I had a guy who worked for me. He had a nail half in and half out because he shot himself in the palm. I've seen it a million times. So I would stay away from these if I were a homeowner and I was just looking to maybe build something. Hire somebody to do it, use screws, do something, but Stay away from these guns because, like I said, they're, they're violent and they're scary. So that's that for the trim guns. They're pretty easy to use. 
that, you know, I don't want to scare you thinking that they're super dangerous, but you obviously have to use some common sense and, and be careful with, with them. And, uh, then you could do just about anything, <clears throat> excuse me, on the interior trim side of, of stuff. You could do casing, you could do base molding and you'll save yourself some money. Um, you know, with the compressor and the, and the three guns, the chop saw, you could probably get out of there for $800 or something like that. Um, so keep it in mind that's you know two days of, of some carpenter coming to your house and it's not hard to, to do the chop saw is not a real scary thing to use so keep it in mind i think uh, interior trim is one place where homeowners can save a bunch of money and, and have some fun doing it and take some pride in doing it themselves so go for it get one of these get two get three have some fun put up your own molding so hope you enjoyed it leave some comments and we'll see you in the next one